Hi everyone, welcome back. In this section we're going to look at line integrals. Now these are integrals of vector fields over curves in either the plane or in space. So let's look at a motivating example. We're going to find the work done by this force field in moving an object along an arch of the cycloid. So the parameterization of the arch of the cycloid is given and our force field is given as well. So the idea is we've got this particle and it's moving along the arch of the cycloid. As it's moving along, this force field is doing work on that particle. So we have to come up with an expression for what work is. This will be something we recall from physics and then see how to apply that in this context. So what is our definition of work? Well, from physics, we have that work is the force supplied times the distance traveled. So one example of where you may have seen this is we've got a wagon. And there's our little wagon handle. And the wagon is being pulled. So there's a force that's being applied to the wagon and that's given by a vector. And there's a component of that force that's in the direction of motion. Let's call that F sub 1, so that's a scalar now. And that force being applied in the direction of motion, well however far the wagon moves, the force times the distance traveled is the work done in moving that wagon. Now because this force may not be applied in the direction of motion, we only are interested in the component that's in the direction of motion. So this would be the magnitude of the force applied times cosine of the angle between the force vector and the direction of motion. And so this is probably something you have seen in physics before. Work can be the force of the component times the distance, where maybe the force of the component you have to work out using the cosine of the angle between the direction the vector is, um, or the force vector is being applied and the direction of motion. So what is it in this case? Well, let's zoom in on our diagram. The issue here is that our force is not constant. Our force is changing depending on where the particle is. So let's just pick up point in Time. So there's our particle. Right at that moment, there's a force being applied to that particle. It's not in the direction of motion, but there is a component that is. And I want to know, just over a small little segment of this motion, what is the work done? So the idea, as with all problems in calculus, is when we have things that are varying, we chop them up into really small bits and imagine over a really small bit it's constant and then apply our formula for that really small bit and then sum up over all of the little bits, look at the size of the bits going to zero or the number of them going to infinity and convert it to an integral. That's essentially what we're going to do here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to imagine that I'm only going to look over a really small segment. So small that I can in fact think of maybe the force as being constant over that segment. So I need to know what is the distance of that segment. That's what we'll call ds, small change in the arc length. Now in that segment there I've got my force that can project on to that segment. So that's the force component in the direction of motion. So if this is the vector f, then what is the magnitude of this force vector in the direction of motion. It's the magnitude of f times cosine of the angle between our force vector f and the direction of motion, and that is the tangent vector to the curve. And so those are the, all the little bits of information I need. I now know the distance I've traveled is ds, the force in that direction is the magnitude of the force field at that point times cosine of the angle between it and the tangent vector. 
So I can bring this back now to the case that we want. So what is the work done to move particle over a very small distance say ds well that will be a small work dw so our work element the work done on a really small segment is going to be the force applied in the direction of motion so where this is the force in direction of motion. In other words, I'm just trying to characterize what is theta. Theta is the angle between the force vector and the tangent vector. And then this is times the distance, and that's ds. Now what is ds? So this is something that we're going to use quite often, so I might as well just put it right up by the title. This is something we're going to use over and over again in these sections, and that is the following. For parameterized curves, ds dt, or the derivative of the arc length function, is the magnitude of r prime of t. Again, we refer to this as two different representations of speed. ds dt is a representation of speed, and the magnitude of r prime of t is another way to talk about speed. So these two things are equal, and now if I re represent the differential ds in terms of dt, what I get is that the differential ds is the magnitude of r prime of t dt, and that is what we want to use here. Because we can write ds now as well, the first part of it is the magnitude of the force field times cosine of theta, and then ds becomes the magnitude of r prime of t dt. And just a little bit of rearranging. We can make that the magnitude of f times the magnitude of r prime of t times cosine of theta dt. Ah, but theta was the angle between these two vectors, f and r prime of t. So what that means is that this is a dot product. It's the force at the point r of t on the curve dotted with r prime of t. So that's what that expression f, uh, the magnitude of f times the magnitude of r prime times cosine of theta is just the dot product of those two vectors, the dot product of f and r prime. And then we got this dt hanging on the end. So that's our work element. That's the work done to move the particle over a really small segment of the arc. And so what's the total work? The total work would just be to sum over all of these little work elements. And since we're going to sum over all of them and let the length of the line segment or the length of the curve that they go over tend to zero, this becomes an integral. So the total work means we're going to integrate over all of these work elements. And we just found an expression for these work elements. They are f dot r prime of t, that's a dot product, dt. And so there we go. Now we've got a motivating problem which shows us the kinds of integrals that we'll be interested in with vector fields. So in this case we are interested in integrating a vector field along a curve that goes through the vector field. And in this case, that gives us the work. All right. So double and triple integrals are based on integrating a function over an area or a volume. What a line integral is, is it's a concept that we will be looking at over the next few sections. It's, an in, it's based on integrating along a space curve. So there are two types of line integrals, two types of these integrals. We could integrate a scalar field with respect to an arc length, or we could integrate a vector field with respect to a space curve. Now, in this case, 
this vector field with respect to a space curve is what we've done above. Uh, we will see very shortly uh, an example of where we would integrate a scalar field with respect to an arc length. But I could give you a, just a quick example right now. Suppose you had a, a, a rod, a, a, basically a curve that's going through space, and its density depends on its position. So because it's a rod, it's got a linear density function attached to it. And so its density is based on the x, y, z value of the point you're at. And so what we would like to do is find what is the total mass of the rod. Well, we would want to integrate along that rod, which is integrating along the space curve, of a scalar function. In this case, the scalar function would be the density function. So we're in integrating a density function along a curve through space. So that would be an example of integrating a scalar field or a density function along a curve through space. So what we're going to do in this section is we're going to look at examples of each of these types, the scalar field, along, and we'll do the scalar field along a curve in two dimensions, a scalar field along a curve in three dimensions, and then we'll look at integrating vector fields along space curves. Our motivating example that we started with was an example of integrating a vector field along a space curve. And you might say, well, all we did is set it up. I haven't shown you how to integrate this. Well, I don't need to show you how to integrate this now, because if you look closely, this is just a calculus two integral. This is a function of t. It's a dot product of the vector field evaluated at the parameterized curve dotted with the tangent vector, but that's just a function of t. And so we are integrating a function of t with respect to t. So this is just a calculus, a calculus two integral. So this is just a function of t, and so it's a calc two integral. So this section is really all about setting up the integrals, because once they're set up, they are just calculus two integrals that we then need to calculate. All right, so this is the end of the first part of this video lecture. The next part we will get into uh, doing uh, scalar fields with respect to arc length, so integrating a scalar field with respect to arc length in two dimensions. Then the net video after that will be in three dimensions, and then the video after that will be some examples of integrating vector fields along space curves. So we'll see you in the next video.